everybody. Welcome to Foxwood Forge. I'm going to show today how I make my lightweight flat jaw tongs. Uh, these are for sheet stock. This is 14 gauge. Uh, they also hold you no know, 3 16 round. Uh, Basically what we're going to do is show the steps to make tongs and this is just a quick way to show it. Uh, doing the offset in the reins to get them lined up and like I say these are the same steps whether you're making a big pair of tongs or whatever kind of tongs that you happen to need. So we'll go over to the anvil and we'll show you how this is going to work. Okay, we're going to start with two pieces of 3 8 round by 12 inches. And basically all you do is you need to mark the anvil where you're going to make the step downs. So for these small tongs, it's at 7 8 of an inch. So I just mark the chalk line for where I'm going to set it down. I want them to finish about an inch little more long so I just make a small spot where that would be okay and then what you're going to do is take your stock set it on your line tilt it down just a little bit and then take the flat part of your hammer and set it down half on half off right on your line and that's going to make your starting point as soon as you can feel where you've made that step, you can tilt it back up flat and start flattening out the material. Uh, basically, when you make tongs, the maximum that you want to set these things down is half the stock thickness. So, basically, if you start with 3A stock, the most you want to set these down is 3 16 if you're going to set them down much more than that, you just need to go ahead and use thinner stock because you're just not using your stock to the best of its ability. All the set downs will be about the same thickness. So once you get the first one, you'll have kind of a guide. Uh, this will wind up being about one inch long by half inch wide. And that's what the second line is for, is to let you know when you've got it as long as it needs to be. If you have trouble with judging a half an inch, you can just take a piece of half inch bar stock and put it on your anvil to let you know when you've got it right. Uh, after you've made quite a few things on your anvil, you start to learn about what sizes things are, half inches, pretty common number to figure out. And, uh, some of you might even have a half inch pritchel hole where you got something else to just check with not something that has to be exact it's just kind of a guide what you what you do have to have is once you set this down that both half needs to be the same so typically I work both halves of these at the same time I'll go ahead and heat two at a time and do the same thing on each one at the same time so you can compare them and be sure that you got them close to the same sizes So let's go ahead and get these things heated up and we'll get started. All right, put it on your line, tilt it down, half on, half off. Now as soon as you start hammering, you can feel it kind of lock on the edge of the anvil. And you see we're still quarter inch thick, so we're going to go ahead and Heat it up and thin it out a little more. Here's the other half, same thing. Tilt it down just a little bit. Set it down. When you can feel it, set it back flat on the anvil. And we're going to flatten out the edges. And go ahead and heat it up. It's already too cold to keep working. Be 
back to your first one. I like to break the two corners in and then go ahead and get it down to the final thickness and width. And you, like I said, you can check it with a piece of half inch bar to see if you're about right. Okay, so we got the jaw established where we want and we're just about to the one inch line so we'll see how the other one comes out. Again, break in your corners. This makes it look more finished. This point is when I like to compare the two halves. See how close they are for length. You can see they match really close, which will make them easier when you're going and assembling them. Okay, at this point, we need to heat up this area back here where the boss is going to go. So we just put them in the fire a little longer. And probably, unless you cool these things off, the part I'm holding in my hand, you're going to have to start using tongs. I can already feel the heat coming down these these things. Uh, if you don't have tongs and you're making these for your first pair, just take a pair of pliers and cool it off to about here so you can hold them again. And you'll have to keep doing that as the heat runs down these things. So we're going to go ahead and I'll grab a pair of tongs and hold them. And we'll go ahead and show you the the next step down. We're going to go to the far side of the anvil to do the next step down. You can come from here where your flat is. And you're going to turn it 90 degrees to the left. Left looking at it. Okay. Uh, if you hold your tongs in your left hand, that's the way you need it to be. If you're one of them people who hold their tongs in their right hand because they're a lefty, then you need to turn your material to the right. It will make a pair of tongs that are more comfortable to hold in your right hand. Now both halves are exactly the same, so uh, you're not making a right and a left. What we're looking for is a kind of a radius edge here. I got about an eighth inch radius on the edge of my anvil right here. And that keeps it from getting a sharp spot where you set it down. Okay, what you're going to do is come here, turn it left, and then kind of hook your jaw. You'll feel it. Right there on the edge, do the same thing you did here. Tilt it just a little, set it down half and half. And then when you lock, you can kind of tilt it back. I'm coming back about three inches. All right, and you can see this is still well over a quarter, close to 5 16. So we need to go ahead and thin it out. My yak in here, we don't get it done in one heat, but typically you can do this in one, two heat. See if we can do this one. Now I use a rounding hammer, which lets me move the material out little better but you can use your flat hammer it just takes a little longer and I like to try to get everything smoothed up before we go back in the fire so you're not doing that when you come out so now we're closer to where we need to be on the 3 16th so we're going to do the, the next step when these get back out we come back to the other half that we didn't get far enough. Again, this should be about a half inch wide up here where the rivet goes.
Okay, we went here, we turned it left, and we're going to do another left turn 90 degrees. You'll see momentarily. So you're here, you're going to turn it 90 degrees, move it out about an inch, hold it on an angle, set it down and then lay it back down in the anvil and continue your taper down this side as far as you went on this side and smooth out what you have again I like to try to keep everything straight as we go just makes it that much easier we came back out Same thing, about an inch out, sit down on an angle, get it to lock, run the taper as far as your other one, move out what you got, There's a little bump right here. So basically what we need to do is move the jaw down a little bit out of the way. Take the edge of your hammer, tap that little bump back in. It'll just give you a clearance problem later. Hold it on a 45 degree angle and get rid of the bump you just made by flattening that out. Basically, if you had to, you could drill the hole and put these together right now. They're not going to be a real comfortable pair of tongs that way, but you could do that. Alright, so we're going to get them heated back up. Same thing. Move the jaw out of the way. Tap that little corner right there next to it out of the way. Set it down on a 45 just to give you that extra clearance, and you're good. You see that we got a nice radius edge on here now. we're going to make the groove in the jaw. The groove just gives you an extra gripping point. Also helps you get the uh, round bar to fit in here. So this is just as close as you can to center. Again, the closer you make this. Now this punch is radius in both directions. It's radius, I'll show you in a second. It's radius this way and this way so that you're not cutting it, you're just making a round groove. there guys
Okay, at this point we're going to do the offset in the reins. Uh, this is something that you can do afterwards. It's just a little harder to get them lined up. Uh, I use a little tool I made out of a piece of quarter inch round bar. Basically, you just take a piece of quarter inch round bar and you flatten it out till it's about 3 16 thick. And the spacing in between there, well, 3 8 7 inch. Uh, what this will do is goes around the bar like this. And we're just going to take the hammer and run hammer it down and it puts the jog in the tongs to get both shafts lined up it's a little simple tool so it's not something that you couldn't just make in a, on the spur of the moment this can be done on the edge of the anvil but it takes a lot more hammer control to make two bends right next to each other So you take it, keep your hammer handy, and put it, oh, about three-eighths of an inch away from the boss, and then set it down. And you can see it made a jog. We just need to straighten everything back out, okay? Same on the other half. Just about three eighths of an inch down. And it makes your dog. Alright. The only thing left to do now is to roughly align the reins so that when you do put them together you don't have to move it as far. I use just a bending fork. go right here where this jog, part of this jog is, put the jaw boss pointed up and then just put a small bend in it and you can see now that the did that the jaw is pointed in the wrong direction so I just go ahead and make it parallel with the rain. Alright, at this point these are ready to drill. I, I usually take and uh, these need to cool, air cool, before you try to drill that hole. If you stick them in the water, you'll have a hard time drilling that hole. Uh, you can punch this hole, but what happens is, when you put your punch here, and try to punch the hole, getting both halves to hit in the same place requires a lot more coordination than I have. Every time I try to punch the holes, they hit just off enough where everything's kind of crooked. So. I like to drill them so that they both wind up in the same place. Go back here, put the boss pointed up at you, put it right on that second bend, just tap it around a little bit, tap the jaw down to make it parallel, and these are ready to cool up and then we'll drill them. Boss, 0.5, so half of that is 0.25. Set your caliper. Mark from both sides. That gives you a, a line there. And with this size tongs, I like to go about 3 eighths of an inch back from where my step down is and mark where the other step down goes. Again, the closer you make these, the better your jaws will line up. And then just center punch right in between your lines and get a good place to get your drill started. Okay, so we got the center marked on these. We'll go ahead and get them drilled and then come back and we'll do some assembly and adjusting. Okay, 
So get the whole drill, get the rivet placed in there. Now if you have rivet tools, by all means, I recommend using them to protect the head. Take the flat side, get the rivet started, then take the round end of the ball piece and work around the edge, kind of rough, make it round. So you get it kind of close. The bottom tool protected this side of the rivet. So what we're going to do now is heat it up and form that side tight. Okay, we got a good heat on here for setting the rivet. I roll it around to kind of help set it all the way even. And we've got it set pretty good. It does have to get tightened up one more time after we do all our adjusting. So now we need to heat up the jaw area so we can get that uh, closed up because you can see it's not going to hold much with them that wide. All right, we get a nice heat on the jaws. They're kind of crooked right now, so just take the vise and kind of line them up. Get them where they're both centered. Then take the vise, just close them up some. I got a piece of small 3 inch rod. Just stick it in the back of the jaws finish closing them up and then you can manually pull the reins all right they're going to take a little little more heat get everything lined up and then we'll spend a second just tightening up the rivet and we'll be good So at this point, we just want to get the two jaws lined up. And make sure everything free. We're going to tighten the rivet up just a little. It's kind of loose. And just give them a quick brushing off, and they'll be good. Okay, we got it now. So, there's our hole in the 3 sixteenths. Piece of sheet stock. So, hit it with the brush real quick. Basically at this point all I do is let them cool off a little bit and then we get a coat of wax on them and they're ready to be used every day. If you look, some of you may have noticed that I had sparklers going. I actually lit these tongs. If you are making tongs and you get them where they start making sparks all over the place where you've overheated them you just need to go ahead and decide that they're not going to work out for you and start over because once uh, the metal is burned like that it doesn't have the strength it has anymore and they're just not going to hold up so it's unfortunate but it means you just need to pay more attention i was so busy yakking to you guys on the video that I just let the fire burn them up and the ones you saw me finish was a second set so just giving you a heads up if you light them get them sparking you've changed the uh, the 
carbon content in the steel, so they're just not going to be very durable as a pair of tongs. You might get by for a little while, but it's really long term, they need to be replaced. Okay, thank you.